Honourable Minister, uh, Mr. Chairman, Director General Ajay Mato, distinguished panelists, Excellencies, dear colleagues, a very good afternoon to all of you. It's a great honour for me, for the International Energy Agency, to give the memorial lecture for uh, Darbury Seid for the 17th time in this very distinguished institution, Terry. Mr. Seid, as the previous speakers uh, mentioned, was a historical industrial leader, but at the same time, a visionary founding this very important institution of Terry. Terry is an institution which is, I am sure, many of you know, very important for India, but I can tell you that internationally plays a very important role as well. My dear colleague Ajay Mato brings Terry, I can assure you, from strength to strength. I have witnessed Ajay's presence in several international summits, fora, Paris, Washington, Davos, Tokyo, China, and I can tell you that he is an excellent ambassador of Indian energy sector. And I thank you very much, Ajay, for that. As for the International Energy Agency, ladies and gentlemen, we are known as the D Global Energy Authority. And as many institutions, we are also reforming ourselves, modernizing ourselves. We are looking at all the fuels, oil, gas, coal, electricity, renewables, energy efficiency, but also climate change and investments. And in the year 2015, we made a major change in the IES structure. Namely, we opened the doors of the IEA to emerging world. For the very reasons that Mr. Minister perfectly highlighted. And in addition to our 30 member countries, in the last three years, seven, limited to seven, major emerging countries joined the IEA as associate members and became the members of the IEA family. China, India, Brazil, Indonesia, and others. Mexico also joined last year. It was the, one of the happiest moments of my professional career when I, in the year 2017, last year, March, signed the associate membership agreement in Delhi together with Minister Goyal and Minister Pradhan. And since then, we work very closely with Indian government. One of the milestones of our cooperation was Mr. Singh's very impressive speech last November during our ministerial meeting in Paris. All the key ministers of the world, all the key CEOs of the world, and Mr. Singh gave an excellent speech highlighting the impressive achievements of uh, India. So Mr. Singh, thank you very much, sir. I understand and appreciate more the value of your visit, as you mentioned today. You rarely accept the invitations, sir. Thank you very much for that. I will not go into details, but with Indian government, we work on many different levels. For example, as we speak now, several of my colleagues 
working with the colleagues from Minister of Petroleum on the oil stocks and emergency for the rainy days in the oil markets. The world is becoming a dangerous place. So we have to sh make sure that our oil, our uh, energy is stored for the rainy days uh, uh, we may have, and we are working with the Indian government to make sure that we exchange information. Mr. Singh gave a lot of important data. In fact, without data, you cannot measure anything. So therefore, for IEA, we are known to be the data organization. We are now working with Niti Ayok and 16 different data agencies in India to harmonize the Indian data system and to make it compatible with the rest of the world. We work on the power markets. India has tremendous, I will tell you in a minute, potential to make more use of solar and wind. But how to integrate them to the electricity system is a challenge. Because as we know, they are intermittent energy sources. So we are working with the Niti Ayok, with Power Ministry. What are the best examples in the world again to share experiences to work on these issues, energy efficiency and the others uh, follow. And we are, as uh, uh, you will see, very keen to go beyond the current cooperation and work we have with India and go even beyond the current uh, situation together with uh, Mr. Singh and other ministries. Now from this, let me tell you a few things from a strategic point of view, how we see the major trends and challenges in the global energy markets and the increasing, ever increasing role of India in that perspective. So when we look at it in the future, ladies and gentlemen, we see a major change, but four of them are transformational. The first one is the India is moving to the center stage of global energy affairs, full stop. Very strong, growth is very strong. And at the same time, another important dimension coming from China, China is changing its energy policies moving to the clean energy sphere under the motto, as summarized by President Xi in the last Communist Party Congress, making the skies of China blue again. Clean energy push. These are two important demand centers and two important moves. Second, United States, thanks to shale revolution, becoming the leader of oil and gas production globally for many years to come, as IEA has envisaged in the year 2009, almost 10 years ago. Oil production number one, gas production number one. Third, solar PV is very much on track to be the cheapest source of electricity generation in many parts of the world. Cost is coming down substantially, everywhere, <laughs> almost everywhere. And it is challenging the established electricity generation sources. And fourth and finally, our energy system, ladies and gentlemen, is being electrified the share of electricity in the total energy is increasing. Only in the last five years, the energy demand growth versus electricity demand growth makes us understand. Electricity demand increased two times faster than the entire energy demand growth. 
this is driven by different needs, by cooling, digitalization, electric cars, and others. So these are the four different, but very important, we believe, upheavals of the global energy system, which will shape the decades to come. And these changes may require, should require, for companies, governments, institutions, to give a second look to the established energy and economic policies in terms of costs, in terms of climate change, and in terms of energy security. I mentioned to you that the global energy landscape is changing. The roles of the different countries are changing. For example, the United States. This country, US, has been years and years a major energy importer. And US energy policy, foreign policy, economic policies are based on this very fact. U.S. becoming, U.S. being a major energy importer. But now, thanks to shale revolution, U.S. is becoming an exporter of energy, especially natural gas and oil. Another region, Middle East. We know Middle East as a major energy exporter, yes. But at the same time, Middle East, Middle East is becoming a major energy consumer. Economic growth, population growth, dissemination of the water needs means a lot of energy. So Middle East is not only anymore a major energy exporter, but also a major energy consumer itself. Of course, China still a major driver of global energy demand growth, but slowing down as the economy matures and also population growth slows uh, down. And again, the India, as we have rightly in the year 2015, three years ago, anticipated becoming the leader of the global energy markets for many years to come. Very strong economic growth, modernization of the country, industrialization, and population. So these are the major drivers, and uh, I completely agree with uh, uh, Minister Singh. If you want to understand what is happening in the world, or better, what will happen in the world, you have to keep an eye on the decisions made in New Delhi, among other capitals in the world. Now, there is one issue, oil. Mr. Singh mentioned the renewables, that's very important, and I will come to that in a moment, but oil today is a key fuel source and the price changes in oil markets affects almost everybody, especially those countries who rely on oil imports heavily. When we look at the oil markets, we see, ladies and gentlemen, that the oil demand is growing and growing even faster than the historical averages more than 1 million barrels per day, and 2019, we expect about 1.5, 1.4 million barrels per day, again an increase. And oil markets are going through rather difficult times. While we have a strong demand on the supply side, what is happening in Venezuela today? Big decrease free fall of production of Venezuela. The several countries in the Middle East facing different challenges, economic, political, geopolitical challenges, their exports are 
set to decline may well mean that towards the end of this year, we may well see tightening of the global oil markets and putting pressure on the prices, unless key producers do not increase their productions. We are, as International Energy Agency, following the global oil market developments on a momentary basis, and we are in touch with all member governments of the IEA, all of the family members, including India. I am regularly close in touch with uh, Minister Pradhan and other colleagues uh, here as the increase in the oil prices or any oil supply disruptions may hit the uh, global oil markets and major importers like India. Now, looking a bit longer term, electric cars. We are seeing each year record after record on electric car sales across the world, and we expect they will increase steadily as a result of declining battery costs, and many governments in the world are giving strong financial and other support to electric cars. And as a result of that, we believe we have today about 3 million electric cars, and it can go in the next two decades about close to 300 million electric cars. This is very important to see that the electric cars are going to grow and are growing very strongly for uh, the reasons I mentioned, cheaper battery costs and the government uh, support. But, I want to put a but, this record sales, for example, last year of electric cars meant still less than 1% of the total car sales, just to put the things in a con uh, context. 99% still the internal combustion engines, the, the traditional cars, one is the electric car. This is uh, very important to note and put the things in a context. Second, this growth, 100 times growth from 3 million to 300 million, does it mean this is the end of oil? Our answer is no, for the following reason. In many of our minds, we identify car oil consumption with the total oil consumption. There are two different things, ladies and gentlemen. Today, cars consume only 21% of the oil. The rest, almost 80%, is consumed by other sectors. So this is the reason, despite the electric cars penetration in the world, despite the having more efficient cars, this will definitely pull down the, LA, the oil consumption, but as a result of the growth coming from trucks, from petrochemicals, jets, despite the developments there, global oil demand will need to grow. I will give you one number. Last year, ladies and gentlemen, one third of the world oil consumption growth came from the Asian trucks only. Asian trucks alone were responsible one third of the global oil demand growth. Hence, it is great that the Indian government puts an emphasis on the efficiency measures for trucks. The message is electric cars are good, they should be pushed, supported, but they are alone, they don't, it doesn't mean it is the end of oil. There are other ways to address the, of course, in the cars, in the transportation sector, to address the reliance on oil, which is biofuels, for example, 
that the Indian government also, the Prime Minister uh, Modi in August, put an important position uh, there, making more use of uh, biofuels, again using LNG for the long haul transportation is the other way to reduce the reliance on oil. Electricity, I mentioned in the beginning. We say at the IEA, the, the future is electrifying. And here, once again, two numbers I will give you, which once again uh, confirms and justifies IEA's decision to open the door to emerging countries, India, China, Brazil, Indonesia, and others. What does it mean? In Europe, we have many diplomats from European countries here. They know uh, as much as I do. We have a long discussion still going on. Should the existing, the share of renewables in the existing fleet should be 32%, 33%, 34%, lots of discussion. Very good, uh, lots of uh, uh, debate and uh, with very good results. But, but, ladies and gentlemen, India, forget the 32% or 33% of the existing fleet, India in the next 20 years is adding one Europe. The biggest growth, one of the biggest growth in the global power markets come from India. The entire power system built in a, a European Union almost four decades will be added to Indian existing power system within the next two decades. And therefore, the choices that the India will make will be not only important for India, but for the rest of the world in terms of the technologies, in terms of cost reduction, and in terms of economies of scale. The same applies to China. In the United States, we have a, a, a discussion on the, how the power plant regulation is made. An important discussion, uh, but China, again, in the next 20 years, is adding one United States. So India adds one Europe, China adds one United States. This is perhaps the very reason why we are modernizing the IEA, why we are opening the doors of the IEA to China, India, why they are now the part of the IEA family. We work very closely uh, together. When we talk about the power sector, energy sector, one key issue here is investment. India, with its strong economy, with the predictability of the macroeconomic policies and energy policies becoming one of the key destinations of energy investments. Last year, for example, India received 80 billion US dollars for the entire energy sector. Good number, but we believe not enough. And when we look at those investments, we see increasing share of, as Mr. Minister mentioned, renewable investment. Solar PV and onshore wind were front runners. But another rising star of the investments make me happy as well, which is the investments in the grids. This is the backbone of our energy systems. And I am thankful to uh, Minister Singh putting emphasis on the grids and their critical importance of the Indian energy sector. Moving from the energy issues to one critical topic, which I know my dear friend Ajay highlights in all of his speeches and interventions. This is the climate change. So we at the IEA follow the emissions year by year, ladies and gentlemen, country by country, sector by sector. And what we have seen is that global emissions increase each year, 
each year they increase unless there is a global financial crisis, as it was the case in the year 2009. Very desperate situation. However, what we have seen in the years 14, 15, 16, global emissions suddenly, there was a plateau, no increase, even though global economy increased significantly, about 3%, to which India made a very significant contribution, that economic growth. So we were happy and we were hoping that this trend would continue, at least flat. In fact, we need to bring them down, not flat, but at least flat was a good news. But our numbers show that 2017, they started to increase again. And when I look at the first six months of 2018, it will be only a good surprise if we don't see emissions increase one more year. So this is the number that we are uh, uh, reading. And India, of course, which it is growing economy, growing population, and growing energy sector is one of the countries which is increasing its emissions in the global energy landscape. However, it is very important to see that on a per capita basis, India's emissions, CO2 emissions today, are significantly lower than many other countries, even that of world. And despite this strong growth, we are expecting that still India emissions 2040 will be lower than the global average, despite the strong economic growth, population growth, and also the, uh, uh, the very fact that the increasing share of renewables will play an important role, and hopefully with the improving energy efficiency. And I should also mention that the nuclear is one of the issues that we need to take into account here. Now, in the international forum, when you go to meetings, unfortunately, unfortunately, when you talk about the environment and energy, the only topic come to people's mind is climate change. And this is a very important topic, primary topic, climate change. No question. But there is another energy-related environment problem, I believe, needs to be heard and needs to be made aware of the wider public. What is that? Air pollution in the cities, quality of air. And this is very much linked to, again, energy. We have the nitrogen oxides, sulfur dioxide, and particulate matter. In all three of them are very hazardous for the health of the people, and we know, we work together with World Health Organization, each year, three million people die prematurely because of the air pollution, and mainly uh, as a result of the local pollution in the cities, and at the same time, using uh, uh, primitive cook stoves in the villages. And this is mainly women and children. It is the reason why IEA is working with many governments to provide advice how to move from cook stores to other options and uh, such as uh, LPG. And one of the examples, inspirations, we give to other countries is the very program of Ujwala in India. It is an excellent work, bringing LPG more than 50 million households in India in an economic way and supporting uh, them. And 
to be honest with you, saving millions of lives. This is an extremely important work, and the use of LPG here definitely is very helpful, but this is a major issue, and today in China, we are seeing double-digit growth of natural gas. The main reason is, ladies and gentlemen, to replace coal to address the air pollution in the cities. So this is an issue that I wanted to also highlight. Electrification, electricity access. Many colleagues who know the IEA, who knows the World Energy Outlook, and uh, me personally, this is an issue which I am following since almost two decades uh, uh, throughout my professional uh, career. And when we look at the numbers, almost uh, 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 mid-1980s, there were more than two billion people who had no access to electricity. Two billion. And now this number came about one billion, halved. Why it happened? It happened mainly because of two countries taking this issue seriously. First, China, and then second, India. India brought electricity to about half a billion people since the year 2000. And the April 2018, it was a, for the history of energy, a very important time because all the villages in India had access to electricity. If I may, Mr. Minister, I tell you a very small uh, point. I came here, in fact, this morning, around 4 o'clock, from Norway. There was a major meeting at, at the oil capital of Norway, Stavanger. 60,000 people. And I was given the privilege in front of the ministers, CEOs, several hundred people, to give the opening speech. I made, I talk about the oil, gas, and when I mention this, electricity access, and India, April 2018, all the villages were electrified, spontaneous applause throughout the room for India. <laughs> this is a great success. This is not a success for energy, this is a success for a human being. So my Great congratulations for that, uh, Mr. Minister. And I don't know who started that applause in Norway, but it was great, and it was stronger applause than when my uh, speech finished, by the way. So it was a great, great applause, and it made me very happy. Now, electricity demand is growing, we said, but growth is good, but it is important to make the electricity growth slower by taking the right measures so that we build less power plants. So therefore, we made a recent report on air conditioners, which we call one of the blind spots of energy debate, air conditioners today. And uh, like in many countries, cooling air conditioner is one of the, perhaps the most important source of electricity demand growth in India. Rightly so. When you look at the countries like US, Japan, more than 90% of the households have a air conditioner. In India and many other countries, it is about 5%. With the increasing income levels, they will need more comfort, which is air conditioner. Therefore, how we design the air conditioners, their efficiency standards, will be very important to reduce this electricity demand growth. Therefore, we build less power plants. Therefore, we build less investments. It's an area that we are working with Indian authorities very closely. When we look at the global energy uh, picture once again, 
Mr. Minister perfectly described the wind and solar. Major development. Several years ago, people said, when I say several years, five, six years ago, wind and solar is good, but they are expensive. But now it is changing. Both wind and solar prices are coming down substantially. In terms of solar, in the last three years, 14 to 17, solar prices are halved. We expect another halving in the next three years. It provides a lot of opportunity for new power plants. And I congratulate again India for the ambitious targets for putting the right renewable energy choices and pushing the right energy technologies and making it one of the cheapest sources of new electricity generation. Putting this picture together with the electricity access picture, I'll show you in a minute. The, not only the success story of electrification in India, but Indian government, in fact, Prime Minister Modi himself, by pushing forward the International Solar Alliance is a very good step in the right direction. To share the Indian experiences, making the most use of uh, solar energy in Africa and elsewhere is a very good view, and it is the reason why IEA is working very closely with the Mr. Tripathi, International Solar Alliance, and uh, his colleagues to uh, provide support both for the uh, alliance itself and to find new partners and working with them. Another success story worldwide and for India. Big achievement in my uh, personal view. It is the LEDs. Only in the year 2010, one out of 100 lamps were sold was LEDs, 2010. One out of 100. And as of today now, 60 out of 100. Between 2010 and 2017, this is globally. This is a major, major change in the global electricity system. It shows how the innovation can help save electricity. In the last seven years, ladies and gentlemen, global, elect global electricity consumption increased by 70%, but the electricity consumption for lighting globally was flat because of this. More houses, more uh, lamps, more everything, but the electricity consumption was flat because of the efficiency gains because of the LEDs. And here, the, which means policies, government policies do matter. Markets are important, but the government policies do matter and gives a shape to markets. The very famous, the, uh, the Ujala program, the, this is a, a major program, provide the energy and finance support for the LEDs is very well known, and I tell this everywhere. We had the Danish colleagues uh, here, diplomats. There was a ministerial meeting in Denmark, so all the ministers, clean energy ministerial meeting. This was the slide, and I talk about the Ujala program, and the very fact that I had to update my number today, one trillion, more than one trillion LEDs are sold in India. Again, a big achievement, Mr. Minister. Congratulations. These are the achievements of India and the station, the world we are in. There's a lot of hope with the new technologies, but challenges never to be underestimated. Many of the technologies will not change the world from one day to another. Therefore, international cooperation, we believe, and learning from each other, we believe, sharing best practices, we believe, is very important. In this context, let me finish my uh, presentation by telling you that the higher oil prices, 75 today, as I mentioned, there are some challenges in the next quarters uh, to come, 
is a serious issue putting pressure on many governments and they are finding different ways in order to protect their economies, protect their uh, consumers. So therefore, the, we all need to keep an eye on the oil market developments for our economies, for uh, our energy systems. Energy investments is a critical issue for India, we believe, power sector and others. In 2015, we made the India Energy Outlook work. A few colleagues here already contributed to that study. And that study, those numbers, if you ask me personally, what are the top three challenges for uh, India? If Ms. I am going to see meet Mr. Uh, Minister, I have the privilege of that after the, this meeting. If you ask me, Mr. Birol, what are the top three challenges for India? My answer is very simple, perhaps too simple. Investment, investment, and investment again. This is the challenge for India, getting more investment in energy sector, new technologies, grids, renewables, and other infrastructure needs. And with it is impeccable reputation of this macroeconomic stability, with it is democracy, with it is very strong fundamentals, there is no reason that we will see more investment pouring in India. We believe renewables and energy efficiency, both of them, are critical tools to address air pollution, climate change, and also reduce the fossil fuel imports as such, helping the energy security and the budget of the country for India. And this is very important that the, before some of the investments are uh, done, that we look in the infrastructure for many years to come, there is a growing emphasis on these fuels as well. Finally, not finally, one before the finally, I wanted to say what I started in the beginning. We are ready to support India to navigate through its energy transition. We have the data, unbiased data, analysis. We look at the all fuels and technologies. You cannot focus on only one, because they are all interrelated, and providing real world solution to India as well as other countries. And we are definitely, as I told the, uh, Mr. Singh last time, uh, I visited uh, a few months ago uh, India, New Delhi, and the other ministers and authorities. We are very happy India is one of our distinguished members of the IEA uh, family. Now, I know, and this is the final one, I know that the challenges are also huge. I talk, highlighted some of the achievements, but the challenges are huge. But in this respect, I can only quote what we can do from a great leader, Mahatma Gandhi. A quote from Mahatma Gandhi. The difference between what we do and what we are able to do would be enough to solve most of the world's problems. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Minister.